Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Lugo Parrish and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. This is Jam DiMatteis and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Getting an early jump start? That's right. <laughs> Always listen to that intro, kids. You may hear, hear some Easter eggs. All right. Welcome back to another week of the Capes and Lunatics. I am Phil. Ampersand? Oh, no, wait, wait. Is that my line? You're really jumping the gun there, Will. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, that wandering vagabond. It is Charles. Charlie, the Professor Essa. And I'm home. I'm not a wireman. I was going to say. I'm from Maryland. Oh, my. I was going to say, live from her secret bunker in Florida. From her Legion of Doom headquarters in Florida. It is. It is little hellfire, duh. In the swamp. They tried to drain it, but we just keep coming back. Oh, that's right, man. Yeah, you guy down there trying to get rid of Disney. Well, that's... Good luck! Because that's a bright move. That's not gonna happen. Well, we still have Universal, Bush Gardens, uh. Legoland. We don't really need Disney. It's just kind of, it's always been here kind of thing. Well, if you're looking to pay higher pet taxes, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm single well, and I have no know, children, so... Well, I was going to say that. I might get her out of four. <laughs> it's not going to change. Well, actually, I mean, it could... I mean, depending on what municipality you live in, oh. it could increase your individual taxes. Oh, she may be right moving. right now, Disney handles all of its own business and pays for all of its own business. Unlike so the casinos like when, when in Nevada Disney... that came together and you don't have to pay state taxes. So, you know what? Disney can go <laughs> F themselves. Whoa! Whoa! We I'm love- moving back to Nevada. That that'll tell you that. Casinos oh, know how to run I mean, run I, I, a, run a place. Swamp the desert. I love Nevada, but no, I'm just I'm just saying it's like basically the amount that Disney would have to pay in taxes is less than what Disney is already paying to not pay taxes. The greedy greedy mouse. They pay more. Good riddance. <laughs> well, yes. Well, anyway, but they pay more to run their basically to run their city like a business. Yes. Than they would if they paid taxes and then have city people come. I- I'm well aware, sweetie. City people. I mean, yes. I'm well aware of the Disney conundrum. Lilith, shut up. I we love our it. Disney overlords and would love early screeners of stuff and uh, interviews maybe with certain uh, act- actors. As a Floridian, as an adopted Floridian, seriously, the mouse can go F itself. Wow. Fight me, Disney nerds. <laughs> they can move to Jersey. Well, I mean, you know, it's fine. It's- Fight me, Moon Knight nerd. <laughs> They can move we to Detroit. Detroit will open them with welcome arms. <laughs> actually, I'm tell they you right now, pro- actually, they have to Atlantic probably make Michigan out of Nestle's cold, dead cold arms, actually. Whoa. So that won't work. <laughs> that won't work. Yeah, Disneyland New York. Let's go. <laughs> if actually, Paris can have Disneyland one, New York Atlantic should have City. one. First of all. Oh, he's saying Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there anyway. Yes. The old people's Las Vegas. You can't Vegas. even keep a casino open Obviously in Atlantic City unless it's, old, unless it's old school casino. New casinos cannot get a foothold. So. Well, well, certain people can't keep a casino open there, <coughs> bigly. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, old, that's old time. That goes way back. Yeah. New stuff, forget it. Oh, yeah. All right. So we were going to discuss uh, what they pushed back that sequel to Into the Spider-Verse until 2023. So, Lilith, why did you say they pushed it back? really been having what we should call an identity crisis the success of their addition to the mcu spider-man movie really had their heads real big but i feel like sony's like just because we make cameras doesn't mean we have to be an actual movie studio i think they are actually reevaluating that and they might want to sell that part off to someone so they want to hold off and maybe shop it around see what they can get i mean i think sony uh the the movie studio itself is only worth like 70 million (laughs) <laughs> like something crazy like that compared to like every other movie studio it's it's crazy how low they're valued at 
Well, I mean, most of that, most of that movie in, uh, segments probably what Spider Man's probably given that value, isn't it? Uh, I mean, probably have J- just sadly. brand just brand recognition, you know? Yeah. But I don't think they can even sell if they want to keep Spider. I think they sell to somebody. They have to give the rights to Marvel. So I don't even think. Oh, oh, I think that yeah, might actually, be how it works. Yes, I believe that is correct. That they actually do not have the ability to sell. Yeah. Um. So they're really actually. That's oh, you know what? That's what it is. Without Spider-Man, they're worth only seventy million dollars or something like that. Ew. When I was reading yeah. about Sony, <laughs> poor Sony. I say, well, since. I, I don't know. I say Amazon, just go ahead. You bought MGM, go ahead and buy Columbia out. Just, just, just do it. Focus on your cameras, man, or get back to making good phones. Like, come on. There's more stuff to do. Mm-mm. But I'm sad. I'm sad. That's the only good thing they had going for them. Gimme, and gimme. They're not trying to end out the year with, with money in their coffers. That's what they're telling me. So that, that, that tells me something's up. Because that's basically a uh, quarter three. That they were banking all their money on, because nobody was banking on Morbius. So, <laughs> well, I thought you were saying maybe there was some kind of deal or buy in the works. So, like, yeah, I mean, that's the only reason why they would push it back so far. So they push, is, but then it's like that doesn't even make sense because they, I mean, they're literally worthless without Spider-Man. Yeah. What are their properties? I'll wait. Yeah, why not do without it? without the Marvel stuff? What are their properties? Quickly, why quickly, not, somebody answer me. Why not do a Why not do a Christmas thing? That's what they did with the first one. It came out in December. That's what I told you. It was weird that they were putting it in October. Yeah, I always thought that that was weird. But yeah, it, it's I don't know what's going on over there. And they said they're pushing back the uh, Cross the Spider Verse sequel to the sequel part two <laughs> to twenty twenty four. Oh, so let me get and then they're straight. also oh okay let me they they're pushing Madam Web back as well oh Equalizer was theirs I'm sorry is Denzel even in that franchise anymore I thought it was Queen Latifah's franchise now yeah. so but no so let me let me get this straight so it was in October when are they pushing it to part one 2023 yeah okay so they're doing it for sometime yeah the, yeah in the, the new fiscal year. they said June 2023 well well, well what this, I read in the article well this next one was a two is a two-parter so yeah they the part one was supposed to be out in October and they pushed that to 2023 and now I guess little saying part two is coming out in 2024 yeah uh, why are they doing a two-parter because that's how you make the monies you gotta be like the JK Rowlings in the Twilight see your, your finale has gotta be a two-parter <laughs> it's a finale. It's only the second installment. But again, you split it in two. Then they're gonna spin out Spider Spider Gwen and um, I think Peter Porker into their own little thing too. Nick, they might have Nicholas Cage back. Nicholas Cage, shout out to him having a really great time with his uh, being John Malkovich ripoff. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, Nick Cage knows what it is. Okay, look, hey. he never mints his words. He knows what it he is. He has to take. He has to take down the yeah. Mandalorian. Come on. He's he's doing very fine for himself. Uh, I I actually it's been a Nick Cage renaissance. I'm not complaining. I still say my favorite thing so far has been Mandy, which is like this crazy psychedelic horror movie. It is just magnificent. <laughs> I told you, see I'm actually really looking forward to him as Dracula in the Renfield film. I, I, that's a spot on. Hey man, yeah. Universal finally getting their heads out of their butts. So Steering the next well, kid. you know. They, they got rid of Tom Cruise. They're like, get get out of here. And I'm going to tell you, you know why Renfield's going to be a success? Hmm. Same reason Iron Man was. Don't focus on the star. Focus on these other characters and what makes them tick. Because then you can tell a really interesting story for Renfield. Dracula's there, but Dracula's not that important. Really. To the entire story of Dracula, Dracula is... He is, he is a deus ex machina at best. And what you really want to know is you want to know what's going on with Renfield. What's going on with, you know, Mina Harker. Those are the stories that actually are compelling. And that is where you actually move your story forward. And you can actually build a horror universe from that. Ah, Dracula sucks. Well, yeah, they kind of, well, honestly, the Invisible Man was their best take on that. But it wasn't actually mm. theirs. So... <laughs> That's actually like, yeah, that's what I want to see. I want to see the horror films recontextualized, you know. Well, exactly, you know. Um, who was it? Uh, was it was it Kiefer Sutherland who was uh, an Invisible Man at one point? He did a good Invisible Man. Um, or maybe it wasn't Kiefer Sutherland. Was it? So maybe it was the other blonde guy. Was it? It wasn't Kevin Bacon, was it? Oh, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. I get those was guys. It? Mis- 
you guys are old. I think I don't it was. I don't think it was Kiefer Sutherland, but he's my default blonde '80s actor. <laughs> and there's only so much space in my head, and most of it's comic books. Ooh, so. Bacon. <laughs> Okay, but like back to Sony real quick. I knew something was up when they sold Crunchyroll because like anime is exploding all over America right now in all its various forms, and they sold Crunchyroll. Although Crunchyroll, whoever owns it now, is running into the ground. So yeah, well, I mean that's the and you know this is actually one of these aspects of business, which is like you can buy a channel, but a channel is nothing without knowing what kind of content to put on it, and that is that is the crux of yonder biscuit is that if you don't know the context to put the, the content to put on it i mean oh great here's crunchyroll we own crunchyroll it's an anime channel what's anime i don't know but the kids like it if that is your approach to it you are going to fail miserably the kids the kids the kids like the animes so put the animes on the crunchyrolls and, and like, be... think about it. They have the Game Show Network that has been a, on and off a flop for them. What else did they have that was a flop? Let me look. It was a whole bunch of stuff. I was just like, ooh, yeah. I, I, I would sell, too. But, I mean, social me- all the social uh, like social media stuff, that all has, like, a shelf. Oh, like, Crackle's I mean... garbage? Oh. Who, who do you know that has crack? Who talks about Crackle? Is Anything that... that's on Crackle. Is that... It's on my remote. It's a button on my remote. And is... I've never watched Crackle. Is that still a thing? Or is that is it it's actually... still a thing! Because the only time I remember Wait a minute. here, the only thing I remember, because I have a Sony TV. Uh huh. Uh huh. The only thing I remember about Crackle was that where Jerry Seinfeld had his show or whatever, that comedians in cars or whatever. Was it? Because I saw it on Netflix. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, it actually got around. That's the thing. Is that Crackle? I think that's where it originated. Maybe it was like for comedy at first or something. I couldn't yeah. tell you what Crackle was, and I I used to have every single streaming service back when it was only five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, by by the way, yeah, Netflix uh yeah. Hey, sh- and look what plummeting. money make a bitch do. Now you now you now your stocks are down. Uh-huh. That's what you get. Talking they, about sharing passwords. That's what you made your bones on. They got Don't lazy. You turn your back on your core principles. They, hey, hey man, they they could they, they they could be lazy before when there weren't that many. Now, you know, you got your Disney's, you got your HBO Maxes, you got yeah, your I Paramount. Mean, that's, honestly, got your, when you talk about nostalgia between Warner's and Disney, you don't really need another streaming there, service. I mean, you got Tubi. There's just too got, much competition. Um, what's the other one? You got Pluto TV, too. Yeah, there's just too much competition. And, and Tubi's free. Mm-hmm. 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 Got yeah. Paramount, I mean, well, uh, Amazon. Yeah. Their originals don't be original and no more. They cancel everything after three seasons. It's time. You had a good run. But Blockbuster's ancestors are coming back for you, buddy. <laughs> you got to pay well, that price now. That's just how it goes. Yeah, I mean, the, the the problem with Netflix, and actually I don't think Netflix has a problem. I think Netflix is in a panic They were never mode. set up to succeed. They've actually literally never made a profit, technically. Oh, so. oh yeah, didn't they just I mean, keep borrowing and stuff? They want to make ads? Yeah, well, now you know problem. if they put ads on Netflix, I'm gone. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, that's BS if you pay and they're still going to put ads on it. Yeah, that, they're not going to succeed. Yeah. Look at you, that. Disney Plus. Coming hey. at the end of the year for Wait. their paid ad tier. Wait, well, uh, well, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a cheaper tier, though. I mean, yeah, it's a cheaper tier. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, you know, it's for people who it, want a lower price and they don't care about it. It's... Hello, my name is Charlie, um, and I'm here to say thank you, Paramount Almost Plus. Uh, you know, it's... <laughs> I don't care if a card has ads. What do I care? You know. It's not even none of those Star Trek shows are worth it if you gotta watch ads. I'm sorry, I haven't watched an tr- ad for Star Trek like I since know, Deep Space Nine. I know okay, that you have no. A- yeah, I know. I got the I got the version two without the commercials. I mean, no, I, I get it. No. I get it. Some people are rarefied and oh, they, they, they fancy. have the way they are. But you know, it, my time is more valuable. I'm sorry, I, I can't oh. do ads. My time is pretty much worthless so it's it's absolutely she has to clean acceptable. she has to clean dog crap out of the yard charlie come on oh see, yeah i got four dogs in the big backyard you know i just because i was gonna say she ain't leaving the house you I don't know, know if biodegrades you don't have to clean it up ew <laughs> ew man, man, you man, that's why that's see thanks to my generation you don't see white dog poo Meanwhile, meanwhile, back in Charlie's day, white dog poo as far as the eye can see. Meanwhile, in New Jersey. <laughs> I'm telling Corey 
Man, no, you hit one of those. You hit one of those landmines with a lawnmower. Oh, oh no! See, exactly, can't chance it. Well, see, that's your problem. You're maintaining a. a, a, a <laughs> oh, you're mowing your lawn. Okay. You should just let it go back to native plants. You see, you're the ones killing the environment. No, you it's just- the corporation. Don't even get me started. Scientists are out here begging and pleading for the corporations to actually do their damn part because we're not going to reduce, reuse, and recycle our way out of this freaking hellhole we created. Don't even start, Charlie! Oh, I know, I know. I don't know how, but the environment, it's either got to be Will Smith or Ezra Miller. I don't know how, but it is. It's Ezra Miller making sweet, sweet love to the timeline. Oh my god, I saw the greatest (laughs) meme the other day. Someone said, unfortunately, there's a greater chance of you getting uh, killed by Ezra Miller than a shark in Hawaii. Ooh. Well, that was always true. Oh, that- <laughs> Sharks don't bother nobody, bro. Leave them alone. Stop stay out messing of- with them and they won't mess with you. Stay out of the water. <laughs> yeah. Sharks don't like people. We taste I'm just saying, Ezra, Ke- El- Ezra Miller makes a great case of why uh, there should be no visitors to Hawaii. Let the natives have it back. <laughs> just I mean, I'm all for that. Quite well, and get dull. The you know what? Get dull the hell out of Hawaii. And <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, actually, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm sure a lot of Native uh, Islanders would love to have tourists and ha- then respectful go. tourists, possibly. You know, well, it's like come, have some hoy, have oh, a surf, okay. go home. That's you know, you know. They, they, they like that money, same as anybody else. Well, well I was going to say, does that lower their taxes, all the tourism? No, oh my god. They, the, no. the natives are probably... I don't even want to get into it, but yeah. Ezra Miller is a case for why we should just leave Hawaii the hell alone. Let them live in peace, please. They're like, we didn't build a bridge for a reason. <laughs> Unless you're in the BoJack universe. <laughs> was it a bridge or was it a show? I can't it was a bridge. It was a bridge. Well, you know. Well, a highway. <laughs> a highway, yeah. Highway to Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, it's an interstate, man. You had to complete it. See that? I'm I'm waiting for some politician to run on that. We will build the bridge to Hawaii and the ladder to the moon. Yes. <laughs> oh man, you know how hard that's going to be to build the ladder to the moon. That's a it, lot. It's of corporate climbing, welfare. Man. It'll be all right. Uh-huh. They're going to hire Elon Musk to do it. <laughs> hey, Lil. Remember that time they built a ladder to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> When Saddam was building nukes in heaven. Yeah. South Park. I'm telling you, man, South Park's a good good rewatch. It, I literally oh, yeah. saw the moment the show died, though. Like, <laughs> Tegrity? No, not Tegrity. No? When Hillary didn't win. Like, oh. <laughs> literally, like, oh my god, it's like so sad. Although, oh, when yeah. they started seeing, no, it's the Whole Foods, actually. The Whole Foods arc is when South Park really started to... I have that's just the Walmart thing reskinned, you know. I haven't seen I haven't seen any of the, some of those newer ones. How did Garrison get to be president? You know, looking like Trump. Because that's what happened in real life. <laughs> I mean, he just came back, and everything's everything's fine in South Park. You should watch season twenty five. It's only six episodes. Mm-hmm. Take you about three hours. Bye, oh. Charlie. <laughs> well, we t- we talked about South Park too long. He's gone now. <laughs> no kids. He's in a hotel. It's that hotel Wi Fi. I don't blame him. Oh my god, it was looking too clear. <laughs> Only Poser still watched South Park in 2022. <laughs> yeah, come on, guy. But yeah, let's get to comics, shall we? <laughs> All right, now Charlie's back. Yeah. If you have a business plan for Sony, DM us, email us, we'll forward it. Or just give us control. We'll give you credit, maybe. All right. So we are talking the comics. <laughs> let's talk the comics. Phil's uh, Comics Corner. Quickly. Quickly. Am I back? Am I here? Yeah. Can you hear us? Am I timely or am I super delayed? No, you're good. You're good. You're super connected. Okay. I had to make sure because I keep on switching my Wi-Fi's between. Okay. I want to make sure. Shang-Chi! Number 11. Um, Do you like karate uh, stories? Um, If so, Shang-Chi continues to be the one for you. So in this one, this is, so this is the whole thing. So there's a Jade Emperor, uh, for those of you who, like, know Chinese mythology because you watched uh, Overly Sarcastic Productions' discussion of it. You know who, who that is. And um, a big shout out to Overly Sarcastic Productions for doing a Journey to the West so that people think he is over at DC and know who the Jade Emperor is here in Marvel. Um, they were very kind to split those up. 
And the first thing you're going to notice is, hey, Jade Emperor, where'd you get all them rings? Um, because this this is the introduction of the Ten Rings MCU. to the to the Marvel comic book universe. Because yeah, Ten Rings, Branding. let's do that. Um, Branding. You have uh, he who who whose name we no longer speak. Uh, there's a new name they gave him. I, it's like Shang F Man. It's not the other guy. It's not the guy that we don't talk about no more. Um, we see we see uh, Shang Chi's mom using her psychic powers to talk to the like the dragons that they ride because it's like can talk to you and mm-hmm. come on trigger. Um, and the thing is, the Jade Re- Emperor. See, this is where it gets count. Kind of, see, this is smart. I don't know if it's smart or not, but basically, he doesn't allow the Ten Rings in his throne room because they are weapons. Only for destruction. So when he calls you to his throne room, he does not have his ten rings. He is still super, super powerful because he is the freaking Jade Emperor. But the ten rings, that's like the secret sauce. So because the um, Jade Emperor calls uh, Shang-Chi's grandfather in, uh, uh, Kin Lin... Um, and he's like, how did you let, you're, you're supposed to keep the humans out. Why did we just find five humans in, uh, five mortals in, uh, Tao Lo? And he's just like, F this man, I'm the dragon rider, Kin Lin, and I'm the best, and I'm going to beat you up, Jade Emperor. So, you know, this is probably not going to end well. Uh, uh, but then, of course, Chang chi steals the ten wing rings, uh, and that's how the story concludes um i do love the shang chi story i love this mythology that is both uh, exciting and new um if you didn't grow up with it and i would imagine if you did grow up with it you're now seeing it integrated into the comics you probably find it just as awesome as kids thought you know greek gods and norse gods were back 60 years ago so i'm gonna give a big shout out to shang chi number 11 a lot of fun uh, and continues to be. Lilith Hellfire. So I'm going to tell you about the best book you're probably not reading. And it happens to be a DC book, so I'm very conflicted. But it's Catwoman, so I'm going to talk about it. Catwoman Lonely City, number three. Oh, I'm worried. Amazing. It. Well, the whole the whole story has been amazing. But number three is just... And I can't... I Look, I already pre-ordered the actual hardcover. Um, oh, we, really? We don't, because, yeah. just It's going to sell out, guys. So we better go pre-order wherever we pre-order from. But yeah, this book is amazing. Oh, yeah. It's everything that um current DC is not. It's got pathos. It's got an actual storyline that makes sense. It's got somebody you can actually root for. And you, and you know, it's good. They actually gave it four issues, you know, instead of a lot of these have just been three. Yeah. And yes, it's it is big. It is a uh, seven dollar book, but yes, next- it's worth every penny. Um, and you know, shout out to to you know writer artist combo Cliff Shane. Like he he worked on Wonder Woman and it also Paper Girls. If you're more of an indie person, and like at first I was like I don't know if this is the right person for Catwoman, but he's won me over every single mm-hmm. issue. And it's not even every month, like the next one, the last no, one. No, it's but... like every two or three months. It's something yeah. going on with their actual production. It's not him. Nah. It's just like DC can't get this particular, the, the other, like the not, because, you know, they've got a million yeah. Batman books they got to focus on. So I thought they were just being, by the wayside. I thought they were just being nice and say, like, hey, we won't make you pay $7 every month. <laughs> yeah, because the next one's no, not until August. No, it's actually being a production. Yeah. They're not really being the best right now. Yeah. No so trouble. It's not on toilet paper like certain other companies. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, Black Label better not be. No, yeah. Charlie, you might like this. It's like set in the future. It's an older Catwoman. Yeah, after everybody's dead, uh, vigilantes are outlawed, and you know, Catwoman is basically you know your V for Vendetta kind of guy. Oh, you know, Charlie would love. And it. we're doing a Batman. Uh, we're doing a Batcave heist in this issue, and it's like uh, plan the plan, work the plan, execute the plan, wait for the plan to go off the rails. Yeah, so they get those vibes. But I think he would classic, classic Captain Cold setup. He would love older Killer Croc. <laughs> Order Riddler. Well, that was your first mistake, to be fair. Order Croc, order the Riddler. Oh, yeah. I liked last issue when everybody oh, was in their little like Catwoman mask, guys, though. That was cute. You know. Whoa. But, then, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, in a good way, do you think it's kind of similar to Rogue's, even though, you know, Rogue's only got one issue so far, but... I don't think it's similar, but 
They're but, both good. Oh, yeah, they're both good. I mean, you know, they're finally doing some black label where it's not like, oh, hey, let's do this just so we can curse and show some bad dong and, you know. Yeah. This actually doesn't, didn't even need to be a black label book. Like, this should be her main book. And I like the main book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I've got that this week, too. Yeah, but that was the, good. The, bat, the, the, the Batman Catwoman book, unneeded. Yeah, because it's like, why is this even a black label book? Except for, I think, every so often they might throw one word out. But, I mean, you could easily yeah. change that. Yeah. I don't. I have no idea why. Because they want to charge $7. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's worth every penny for me. Like I said, I already pre-ordered the hardcover collected edition, so. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's it's worth it. How do you like the art, though, Phil? I know sometimes you're kind of... Um, no, I like it. No, I, I think it fits the mood of the book and... No, I, yeah, I know. Some sometimes I'm picky with art, but no, I like I like the art. No, I like uh, Cliff's art most of it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where else I've seen it, but no, I like Cliff's art. Yeah, it reminds me of like because it's, it's more of an indie style because I think yeah. he is probably best known for like Paper Girls. So. Yeah, but it, it does remind me like that early uh, Brew Baker issues that you know from what we covered like the oh yeah, 2000s. I think yeah. that's definitely uh, intentional too. Yeah, yes, it fits the mood. So if you're looking for a new uh, female antihero to get into, um. I want this to be her future, kind of, sort of. Is that sick and sad? Like, I want this to be a definitive future for her. Because <laughs> everybody else is dead. All the, ba- all the bad character, all the bad families dead, or except for Barbara. You're like, yeah, that's fine. That, that works. <laughs> Sorry, Dick. Whoa. Is Barbara at least commissioner? Re- she's retired something. Is Barbara commissioner? No, no. no she's like an She's a- retired, and it's weird, but... Uh. She's like an activist. She's like a like yeah. a, what like a political activist or whatever. Yeah. How is Barbara retired and Catwoman is still active? Well, she got a, Catwoman was in prison Batwoman for like twenty is 10 years. years. Older than Barbara. Well, yeah. Well, she, that, that is too. I mean, they do show like she has. You know, she is. Yeah, older. everybody's old. And, and like, and especially that first day, she she gets out of prison. She's like, oh, I'm out of shape. You know. Yeah, you know they don't they don't they don't they don't uh, go you know ignore that Charlie. No, they they play that up. They're like, yeah. she's like, I'm old, I'm out of shape. Eh. My knees hurt. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh god, it's so relatable. <laughs> now, let me this black leather cat suit and go jump off a She doesn't even do that though. Her co- her leather. new costume is very baggy, and, <laughs> and yeah, it's more practical. Oh yeah, they they're not ignoring that. If you're ever in the comic book store and see it, just well, thumb through it. I think you might like it. It was pretty baggy, too, so... Yeah, I thought that, that was the best book I read all week. DC, Marvel, or otherwise. Oh. Well... My did... pick of the week! Well... Both approved! Well, did you read the last issue of Blue and Gold? Of course I did. It's, it's alright. It's alright. We, 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 <laughs> we solve a years-old mystery. Who is the Black Beetle? I know. I'm just like, no one cares. <laughs> the scarabs are not a thing. Stop trying to make the scarabs a thing, bro. We're, we don't need any more power color coded rings, beetles, nothing. Stop it. <laughs> but no, yes, Black, again, spoilers, kids. Black Beetle was revealed as uh, Earth 3's version of Booster Gold. Ooh. It's always Earth 3. Well, you know, he, well, well, he's like, you looked up the Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. He's like, I had Ultraman and... <laughs> Well, that's your first mistake, Ultraman. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, yeah. That's a dude, bro. But no, I mean, I enjoyed this book for what it is. And then, of course, oh, okay. Sorry, Ray. Uh, yeah, at the end, they're out of money, but Batman comes in and gives them more money. But you know what they had to do for it? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> they had to dust the old Batman off, if you know what I mean. They had to polish the doorknobs. Batman. My favorite character. They had to say that. Oh, to do with Batman. <laughs> But no, I enjoy, I thought this was a fun series. I wonder if they're gonna yeah, do. It was fun, yeah. but unnecessary. Who who really cares about? It? They've been trying to make Booster Gold a thing forever, and it's just not gonna happen. I mean, it makes sense. It's like you know, Dan Jurgens wrote this, and he created Booster and stuff. But you yeah. know what? I would like a sequel. May, maybe give it again. I'm not trying to kiss his butt, but give it to Demetrius. So, you know, he wrote them for years in that just in the Justice League. Yeah, it just felt a little too predictable. <laughs> it's just a little too happy go lucky. We're we're past that with DC. Like it felt like a throwback. I think I like them, Lilith, but you were expecting a lot of depth from Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. Blue Beetle, at least. Ah, true, true. Booster yeah. Gold's just there because he's the himbo. He's the he's the Chris Helmsworth of the of the franchise. Oh. <laughs> Hey man, Chris Hemsworth. And he's it. okay with hey. that. And Chris is okay with hey that. Hey man, he's he's about to be in a fourth four, Thor movie, man. That kind of pays. Like. That, that, yeah, that's paying the bills so he can go play romantic leads with um that girl from uh 
go sing in movies. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> I know, right? My my uh, my, go- my goddaughter was watching some terrible movie. I was just like, okay. You know, the movie with the cup song, Anna Kendrick's, that, those movies. Oh, okay. like three of them. Okay. Is it, uh, oh, They sing acapella, pitch, you is know. It pitch Perfect, is that it? There you go. Okay. Yeah, that the 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 um, I forget the girl's name. What Rebel yeah, Wilson? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you. Wait, he's playing. He's in a movie with Rebel Wilson. Yeah, it's from like a couple years ago. She oh. was watching that too, and I was just like, "Oh, it's a rom com." Okay. <laughs> I thought he did everything with Tessa Thompson, though. I see you, Men in Black. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back uh, to Charlie. You're up, Charlie, or down there. You're up. Hey, everyone. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is being a jerk today. Uh, hey, I'm mean, got you. Out. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> For the Florida lobster. Yeah, wi- uh, hotel Wi-Fi is not as good as it should be, especially when everyone else is on Wi-Fi. Um, you should have went down I to the do... business center. <laughs> I, uh, I, I I spent eight bucks on this book Ooh. because it? it's Star Trek DS9 Ferengi centric story, and you know what? It's worth eight bucks. It was worth it. Eight bucks. Uh, DS- is it IDW? What is it? Who is it? Oh, is that a trade or something? It's IDW one shot Star Trek. Ah, it's a one shot. The future is female. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, which is the thing. I, they were gonna do eight bucks like for like two issues. I'm like, no. But as a one issue, it was worth it because it's like, oh, you know, you got about two issues worth of content, and it's all in one book. So eight bucks, ah, eh, I can work with it. Um, it is a mid round uh, DS9. So it's like this is a story set in the past of DS9. Because obviously, because Cisco's still there, uh, and also interestingly enough, Quark has not lost his Ferengi business license yet. Okay, because that's one of the threats that comes into it. They they even sort of put a little hat on it. They put a little lampshade on it because they say, "Do you really think your customers care if you have a Ferengi business license?" Turns you know. out they didn't. Burn. They, well, of course not. But uh, the plot line is is that basically, uh, remember Pell. The uh, Frankie female who went to who poses the, a guy the freedom, yeah, yeah, and went to the freedom of the uh, Delta, the Delta Quadrant. Yep, you're right. Yeah, the Delta Quadrant, uh, where you know the the benevolent uh, founders didn't care that you were there to make money. They were more than happy to welcome Frankie business people. And allow them to trade and make money within the uh, the founder's dominion, and it was a very benevolent and peaceful relationship until you know a bunch the of damn federation. The federation showed up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, only they could let the Ferengi guide the, guide the universe. Things would be so much better, at least the galaxy. Anyway, and essentially, what's happening is Moogie has been. By the way, I, I, I love man, he's always playing baseball. That's our little. That's how we know that um, that uh, Cisco's still on the station is he's playing as uh, baseball. And this is, I think that's Jadzia. So I think that's supposed to be Jadzia. It's a very poorly drawn Jadzia. Anyway, um, probably aren't allowed to use her uh, likeness after as you it know, turns out, her they departure. Are smuggling, yeah, um, Jad. Uh, Moogie is smuggling females off of Fringenar to the Gamma Quadrant where females can make profit. Um, and it's interesting because it's actually, you know, several of the, you know, haven't people noticed all these females going missing? To which it's like, yeah, people notice females going missing. Um, but then you say, well, most left with their husbands, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but they are trying to get the daughter of the chairman of Slugo Cola to, uh, go off world which basically leads to this complex thing and and because you know we brunt shows up oh no one likes brunt and quark has to only is, is gonna help out moogie just to, to to screw a brunt they basically have a whole system and we also find out this is brilliant the fact that uh Frankenar is riddled with tunnels why is Frankenar riddled with tunnels because females can't be seen in public so if you're going to say females can't be seen in public but they also have to maintain the home so that basically females have to go down into the tunnels oh. and go from place to place to effectively 
network throughout the city. But this causes a problem because they say, well, can't we take the tunnels to the shuttle base? And say, why would there be a tunnel to the shuttle base if women aren't allowed off world? Hmm. Quark. Think. Think. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the storyline progresses. Uh, a couple times, Moogie says, let me worry about the Grand Nagus, which lets us know that she's already starting, she's already playing the lobes. Um, and and effectively, they do get um, the woman off uh, off world, and this is an interesting point because it's about root beer, as always, as all DS Nine stories should return to root beer as our symbol of human integration into society. Uh, and um, Bashir says, "You know what? Based on that story, I'm going to actually try myself some Coca Cola." And and Quark just says, "No." Stick to the root beer. Trust me. And it's really good. It's really fun when uh, Quark has to, like, approach the mansion of the head of Psychocola. He basically just shows up and starts saying, I demand we speak with him. The amount of live algae in our last ship of Psychocola was less than the 40% guaranteed on the label. I demand redress. And the guard's like, what are you talking about? You can't just show up and demand redress. And even if that is true, what you said, that's not an issue for the CEO of the company. So it was delightful. It was fun. If you like Ferengi like I do, I highly recommend picking up uh, uh, Star Trek One Shot uh, by IDW, for the Ferengi. Um, it'll make your day. It's worth the eight bucks if you like Ferengi. If you live for Ferengi, this is a Ferengi book. You heard it here first, Matt Kona. <clears throat> All right, Lilith. Okay, I have a complaint book. What the hell is Earth Prime, Superman and Lois supposed to be? <laughs> you know what? I... Is it supposed to be the TV show? Is it supposed to be paying tribute to the... I, I don't know. what it, It's trying to do yeah, too the... much. It ends up doing nothing at all. I, what is this? I, I picked up the Batwoman from what what last week or yeah, whatever it came out. Yeah, that one was garbage. And, and I and I picked up the Superman one too. Uh, okay, here's my problem with the, both these books. It's like, why are you putting these covers on here when the interior art is so much better than the covers? Okay, uh, it wasn't just me. I think they're trying to trick little kids to picking it up, bro. Maybe the old bait and switch. <laughs> Wait, are you saying the interior is better than the cover? Yes, yes. The covers look like. Something I would have drawn in fifth grade. They look I'm like sorry. an old age. They look like an old ages book. But meanwhile, like the inside, the like the art, you know, you get like. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Yeah. You're saying they're, they're trying to have people think it's an all ages book, and then Lobo, Lobo. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, they don't really have to trick the kids. It's kid. okay. It just doesn't know what it wants to be, and so I'm confused Thanks. the whole time. They're celebrating their anniversary, so I'm like, this isn't a black label, so it's not going to be any fun. <laughs> it, well, hell, hell. But yeah, it's like, yeah, they're telling the kids this story. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the kid, you know, except for that one. And kids, that's how I met your mother. Ah, <laughs> uh, and again, it's like, besides that story, the kids even in this book, it's like, no, not really. And it's, you know. Yeah, that's why I'm confused. It, it's supposed to be from the TV show, but it doesn't seem like it's from the TV show. And, and one's like a flashback to him remembering his father and stuff, and. I mean, the closest thing you get to that last story where it's like, oh, hey, look, that, super, that Superman from uh, John Henry Irons Earth, oh, he's going to be a problem, you know. Yeah. I mean, at least Man. they, I mean, they tried to put like. So it's, so it's like the TV show, but it's. Also... And you know, I don't watch the TV show. I, I, well, yeah. I, I have cursory knowledge. Well, yeah, so all... I'm just like, what is it? Yeah, it's like five issues, Charlie. They're all going to be based on like the TV shows. Yeah. I mean, at least Batwoman has a, a need to exist because the actual main Batwoman isn't black, but it's like, we already have a Mary Lois and Clark in the actual, yeah. the actual Superman books. Well, and again, it's like, I was reading, you were saying, oh, was that the, like, the people who re work on the TV show, I think, but like, that was it, that second story, that Luke story in the Batwoman issue, that was written by, uh, what's his face, Cameron, Cameron Johnson, who plays Luke on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Corporate welfare, it's fine. And it actually takes it's place fine. like it actually takes place like in an episode, you know, when he's on the call with them. That was actually yeah. an episode, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean oh, so it's like what happens off screen. Kinda, yeah. Oh, come on, Lilith, fan of Superman four, you didn't like him fighting the nuclear man? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know. <laughs> it wasn't great. 
But, Superman is one of those. It's like, hey man, we already have two books plus his son's book. Um, stop that. But but you're I not gr- Batman. You can't carry all these titles. If you're gonna bring back a book, bring back Lois Lane or Jimmy Olsen. I don't need none of this extra. Crap. Well, well, it has to be Superman and Lois because it's a it's a Arrowverse thing. Yeah, I know, but like we don't need those. Yes. The, the, hey, PSA: the Green Arrow tie-in books didn't do that good. <laughs> so what are you doing did, now? You bought them. Good. Did they introduce Nuclear Man? In the show, no. And not Cliff no. Foreman? No. No, I mean in the books. He was in, like, okay. one panel. They show Superman fighting him in one panel. Yeah, no, that's it. Oh, so it's just other fights he's had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the past, I fought a nuclear man. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's like one panel. Yeah, no. Easter eggs. Although that wasn't the first appearance of Nuclear Man. Didn't Bendish have Why him show up for two Gus Corman, DC? They're afraid you're going to sue him, Charlie. <laughs> Or, or David Walker, David F. Walker's working on it because you gave him that idea. I hope so. I mean, that is my. Then he can ha- you can he can have a little podcaster nag him every other episode, and his name will be Charlie. Yes, and you'll David know Walker that's, on your, the phone. that's your tribute. <laughs> I, I'll give him that drop. Get David Walker on the phone. Here I am. Yeah, you know. Uh, all right. So that was your book. Uh, good. I don't have to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Lil, did you uh, did you read Flash seven eighty one? I did. Wally um, and Wally. Yeah. It was cute, yeah. wasn't it? It was like the, the you know them going around the world doing stuff, and Wally's like, "Hey, I want to spend more time with my wife and kids." So, hey, you younger Wally, can you help? Uh, At some- this point, can we just have Bart, please? Oh, uh, well, Bart's not no, there. No, too, Tino right? Shade. I, I miss Impulse. Well, he's out there. I mean, he's in that Young Justice book by Bendis, but I don't know what where he's been up to since. I miss Impulse. I said what I said. <laughs> You're quite impulsive. Hey, well, uh, but no, I thought this was cute. That was Jonathan Taylor Thomas on, uh, on uh, Smallville, right? No, not even close, honey. Uh, Jonathan Thomas Taylor was on Smallville, but he did not play Impulse. He played a villain of the week. Who played Impulse? I played forget Impulse, that kid. He's in everything. He used to be in everything. Uh, okay. How dare you not remember Smallville super fan Little Hope <laughs> actors names right now i'm a little tipsy so just just, just bear with me bro hey charlie <laughs> okay charlie jr um but yeah you know i thought that i thought the flash book was cute i mean you, i know you haven't been uh feeling it all the time but and then we get the little wally flashback with barry oh and i love every dc book has this uh kyle gellner happy Oh, That's nice. Yeah, I'm looking up right now. <laughs> no, I made <laughs> But I love every DC book uh, this week, and I think last week has that Flash movie prelude. Uh, <laughs> ad. Canceled. That, that's never coming out. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will have it some way, somehow. It, it's already been to Well, yeah, I, just, I feel they're probably going to try to destroy them. I'm sure someone's going to try to hoard them, yeah. Yeah. wonder how much uh, eBay's going to be selling those for. I bet you my guy already had them. Well, I'm going to ask him, like, hey, do you have this? I got 20 bucks in it for Oh, that. my God, be no. selling them online if he ain't got them. Uh, but no, I, I thought the Flash was pretty good this week. All right. Uh, Charlie, you want to throw out something else? Oh, I guess I could. Uh, let's see here. Um, Remember, you can save your Captain America for other people. No, I know. Well, I've got three books left. They're all Avengers books, so... Uh, Did, no indie Hulk or Cap? Other than your... Uh... I, I was going to say, throw, throw no, out the... I only got the one indie this week. I was going to say, throw, throw out... Throughout the Hulk. I mean, the other book that I should have read was Doctor Strange, and I forgot to. I forgot. And here's the... Okay, I'm not going to... I'm going to review this book without reading it. Uh, <laughs> it's awesome and cool, because it's the nexus of nightmares. Um, here's my thing. So, big fan theory, big super connectivity fan theory here. Everything everyone is thinking about a Multiverse of Madness is wrong. The main villain is actually Nightmare. And everything we've seen our dream sequences of Nightmare just messing with Stephen Strange. So no matter what you see, no matter what happens, it's just dream logic. It doesn't make sense. And people are going to change and morph halfway through the show. And that's how you're going to know it's not real. Mark so my I words. picked this up because I wanted to read this. I said, you know what? I really feel Nightmare is going to be centered to Multiverse of Madness, and then I somehow forgot to read it, because as I was moving through my books, you know, I have the, these are the books I've read, these are the books I haven't read, and I go through, and I put each one here, and each one there, and then somehow one got put in the wrong pile, and it got missed! 
So I'm going to make this my time to rant about how the fact that Multiverse of Madness is coming out soon, and everyone is so certain, oh, this is where they integrate the X-Men, and oh, that's clearly Patrick Stewart, uh, Professor Xavier, and he's going to do his mind stuff, and oh my gosh, it's the Illuminati, and yada, yada, yada. No, it's all a dream. It's the Maggie. Horrible, horrible <laughs> weird with me now. And at the end, Dr. Strange is going to step out of the shower. Whoa! And oh, classic Dallas Scarlet Witch moment. is going to go, going to go, what happened? And I Wong is just going to hug him. Oh, that's right. I killed oh, Tony Stark. That's right. I dreamed you were dead. Oh, uh, and now we're going to get a nice little scene with Wong and, and, and uh, Steve. Bobby Cucumber Puke uh, mm-hmm. will come out of the shower and go, I had the strange dream. Benedict Cabrick's patch. Cucumber Puke. Right. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about uh, Bobby Ewing. Uh, uh, talking about old them. Yeah, that got confusing there. Talking about getting old though, Hellfire. Yeah, yeah you know, because that was, um, oh, what was his name? Because he was on Step by Step, too. Patrick Duffy. He's a fun actor. Patrick Duffy. I like that. Patrick that I know. Duffy. Step by Step. Day by yes. CGIF. But he played Bobby Ewing, who died during the season. I didn't season. know that. <laughs> yeah, and that's why, and that's basically what they said. Well, you know, let's just have him walk out of the shower. It's like, no, actually, because it was a contract dispute or whatever. As he, they he always got are. Out. He got written out. They killed his character. Ratings tanked. And then, and then, well, no, actually, ratings were fine, but they just, he later he came back and they said, you know, we would like to bring him back. So why don't we bring him back from the dead? It's like, and it's effectively what they did was they had. They just basically wrote the entire season, like this entire second half of, of that season of Dallas, as if this was the final season. And they just, you know, they had Jr. like finding his goodness in him, and you know, making choices that were like not normally to Jr. It was like really, really beautiful. Run, love, I'll do. And you. then at the very end, um, you know, there's all this chaos, and then uh, uh, what's your name? Uh, Patrick Duffy's uh, character's wife wakes up, who was a, uh, who was, oh, God, why am I blanking on everyone's name on this? I used to watch Dallas all the time. I love that show. And she wakes up, goes to the shower, and that was the thing. It was like, in the original, when he dies, he, she goes to the shower, he comes out, and then he walks out and gets hit by a car, and that's how they write him out of the show. And then he gets out, and he's alive again, and he says, oh, I had a dream of horrible horrible. So. So mark my dreams. words. That is how multiverse of man descends. Talk, talking, talking about getting hit by cars. Little hellfire, you're out. <laughs> Hope number six, just for you, Phil. Oh, nice. Oh. Smastronaut part six of six. <laughs> I was like, no, can we just rename the whole book Smastronaut? Like, I am here for that. <laughs> Shout out to Ryan Otley with his artwork. I am absolutely just in this. It's a yeah. different take for sure from what we came from, but like. I like it. And we it's had, fun. And we had the end of the arc because we're getting that Hulk Thor crossover coming up next. I wonder, wonder why. That smells me a movie. Well, plus it's like, was the 60th, is it the 60th anniversary for both? So. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, I like, I like it. I, I think the story was, it was a good way to wrap things up. And they always give you like that little preview of what's to come. It's just a, it's good plotting, good pacing. I mean, I like the book. It's I mean, different. Like I said, it's different, but I still like it. I mean, is this the Hulk's new thing now? I mean, it's not Al Ewing, but are, like, are they steering into the body horror aspect now? I mean, less so than the previous. Yeah, yeah, less than the before, but... But how can you not, like, mention it? You know what I mean? Yeah. I just mean, you know, <laughs> just the weird stuff and the Hulk covered in blood <laughs> and gore. No complaints from me. I mean, look I mean, look at that cover. Just, <clears throat> yeah, Titan. And I'm sure Russell will have something to yeah, say about although, that. I have to say, what I really liked this, which is just something that did not get enough of a moment, is that apparently there's this whole scene after all of the explosions and stuff. You get, like, the Hulk leaving the engine room, and he's just like, welcome home. And, and it looks like a gray Hulk, so it's like, this is like base integrated Hulk. Like, this is what we could be, man, if only you weren't a jerk. Oh. I like that. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, yeah. Did you guys see that that mini series is coming up? That new Fantastic Four, written by Peter David himself. Yes. That dumbass. Only reason why I will be perfect. 
All didn't right. like it the first time, maybe I'll like it the second time. <laughs> Alright, let's close this out tonight. I'll throw out my last book. Uh, I'm sure Lilith will say no and that, but Lilith, you sure you didn't read Wolverine number 20? Hell no! Uh, After all those X-Men, X-Lives of Wolverine and X-Deaths of Wolverine, no! No more Wolverine! He's done! You you may want to read this book for the uh, guest star. If Emma Frost isn't on top of Scott Summers humping, I don't want to read it. Whoa! What about our old friend, uh... Are they getting married? They're mutants. They're living in sin. No! Our old buddy, Wade W. Wilson. <laughs> oh. Okay. Getting on everyone's nerves. Oh, I think you'll like. I think you'd like it. Well, uh, I'll see if anybody has a copy around. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey. Oh no. You know who also makes an appearance for like, what is it? One or two pages. Blind Al. How much is the oh, book? Good old Blind Al. Three um, ninety nine. Yeah, regular three ninety nine book. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, come on. You'll like I, it. You know I got to do my Saturday run. Fine, Philip. Parental advisories on it. You you'll like okay, it. Okay, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Yeah, so it's not watered. How you know it's good? It's not watered down. Dead, uh, Deadpool. Come on. Uh, but, but yeah, Robbie Wolverine's decent. But yeah, it's Lilith now. Deadpool. I, I'm so. over Wolverine. Like honestly, I'm so over Wolverine. There's just oh my god. There's just like there's like a montage of like scenes of him trying trying to sneak on the Kako the Krakoa, and one of them is just like him sitting on uh, Cyclops's back, piggyback, <laughs> trying to get through one of those gates. No, um. It was just Percy, right? Yeah, Benjamin Percy. Yeah, I think he did a good job. Oh, oh, yeah, we love Benjamin Percy. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did a good job with uh, Deadpool, so. Like I said, it's worth the read, and it, it's continued, so I believe. Yeah, so Deadpool should be back next issue also. That's how they get ya. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I know you. I know you're burned out after X Lives and X Deaths, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's worth. like X 23 or nothing at this point. Hey, <laughs> but- no, no more Logan. He died in the movies. Can he die in the books, please? Oh, please my. and thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, and again, you people who make fake uh, videos on the internet, F you. Uh, yeah, he and my dad pulled yesterday. He's like, oh, did you see the thing for Deadpool 3? I'm like, it's fake. He's like, but no, no. Aww. He's like, but no, no, no. It's a- <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. It says Deadpool 3. I'm like. They got Daddy Purge. All right. Show me the link. I'll track them down. I'll have, to, I'll have to see if they can send it. No, uh, my mom's like, look. But on the screen, it says Deadpool 3. I'm like, yeah, because they can fake that. <laughs> Leave your parents alone, Philip. <laughs> no, they believe everything on the internet. Everything. Well, they got a 90% chance of being right, though. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean... Like, that 10%. I mean, like, everything. Trump's a good man. You know. Uh, all right. So, should we get out of here? Waka, waka, waka. We have to do the final episode of Super Connectivity, kids. Spoiler. Well, no, the spoiler is what comes afterwards. Oh, you have to tune in. Mm, okay. Gone, but not forgotten. That's right. It's okay. I heard you have let- Legacy my, I do not wish in. to perish t-shirt today. <laughs> right, oh, Lil push it out. We'll Legacy. have something, I'm I sure. love Lil push that Legacy number. Meanwhile, if they put it on a comic book, she's like, Why did they do this, FM? Dude, if we did Legacy numbering, it would be insane. Bro. I told you, if we just had one numbering system for all the shows we do, <laughs> we'd be, what, over a thousand? <laughs> it's over nine thousand! <laughs> Suck it, Ray! <laughs> Suck it, League of Geeks. <laughs> all right, so. All right, kids, send us your thoughts. Why did you say that name? <laughs> send us your thoughts on the comics, on any TV shows. Doctor Strange, we're two weeks away from Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness. Uh, so send your thoughts. Email us, Capes and Luke. Are, are we doing that on the main show? Oh, yes, we are, Lil Hellfire. You got out of some of these movies. You got- I can't wheeze a lot of it. All right, I'll go see you. You, you got out of Eternals and Morbius. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Uh, Pushing my luck over here. Get like one a year, little hellfire. You used your one already. All right. So email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can follow Capes and Lunatics on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, find links to all the various social medias and Facebook fan groups for everything we do. Uh, Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. I mean, we've been getting our, our subscribers slowly but surely. Our subscriber count's been going up. So, yes, don't miss a minute of uh, the regular shows, creator interviews. More and more are coming. Uh, so smash that subscribe button. Smash it. And most important, uh, go please subscribe to the Patreon. Again, you get early access to creator interviews. Mr. DG Chichester every month talking to me a little. I got the good mic out for you guys. And Chichester Chats. 
Never lived until Lil Tuscany was pink. Ah, uh, and of course, only on Patreon. Superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time. Ray Ray Pod, you're you're his only hope. Don't leave him hanging. He said maybe after Moon Knight shows over. Ah, uh, so two more weeks. Come on, serenity now. Uh but no. Uh the April episode, we will uh, pick a Marvel winner. So, and then in May, we'll start with the DC. Oh boy. Uh <laughs> Hit him right in the face with that DC. Uh, so yes, subscribe to the Patreon or pick yourself, uh, pick yourself up some Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Uh, find everything all in one place. That's Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. I was just updating it today. Lilith Hellfire, where can people find you in your swamp? If you uh, want to keep the swamp a swamp, uh, follow me on the interwebs at Lil <laughs> on Twitter, at Lil69 on Instagram, and of course, making comments and not content at Lil69 on the TikTok. Either do the six or do the nine. Let me get a ride on your alligator back, bro. Oh, you don't want to know the things I've done. Somebody's muffins are getting buttered. That ain't my business. Charles Esser. Well, that's right. They may do so at superconnectivity blog over at gmail.com. That's connectivity blog, all one word, at gmail.com. Go follow me on the Twitter. I tweet things when I feel like it. At Charlie Esther. That's C A T R L I E E S S E R. It's the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Oh. Thank you, Mozzie. Ah, this should be fun. Alright, kids. Thank you for joining us. For another week, we have been your capes. I'm beside. Lunatics! Woohoo! Ride the hurricane! Woohoo! It's like a little tough fire. Yay, little doggies! <laughs> On the march to 269, summer of 69 coming soon. In June, July, woo! Oh, that! Oh, we're I uh, love Hellfire. Oh, we're like next week will be 259. Oh, hope you have plans, Will. I got nine weeks of here. <laughs> <laughs> he loves pressure, kids. <laughs> Thank you, good night, and suck it, Ezra Miller. <laughs>